Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Well, a couple weeks ago I hit the road and I went up to Banff National Park, Lake Louise, Yoho National Park, and I took a little bit of a drive up the Icefield Parkway. Now, it was a great time to get away. I had some amazing pictures from there. But one of the things that I did and I really enjoyed a lot was I went and I spent an entire day shooting some waterfalls. Now, I just hiked into this area and there was a couple waterfalls in the same area and I took pictures all day. And while I was doing it, it got me thinking about some of the questions that people have about how to get better pictures of waterfalls. This is one of those areas that so many people take pictures of and they just don't look like they do with the human eye. So in this video, I'm going to talk about some of the suggestions that I have for people on how to get better waterfall photos. First area that people struggle with is just not getting close enough to your subject. Now, sometimes you can't. Honestly, there's some waterfalls you just can't get close to. But if you have a bigger lens, if you have a zoom lens, use the zoom lens. Try to get so that the waterfall is filling most of the frame. Now, this is a huge waterfall. And this is from the parking lot where many people snap their pictures from. All you have to do is you just have to move a little bit closer or like I did here, you just have to put on a different lens and zoom in a little bit closer so that the waterfall is filling more of the image. The tree that's on the right hand side adds a little bit of contrast to the waterfall. It's the same height, but it's a little bit darker. So it fills the photo a little bit more. The other area that so many people struggle with is what I call trying to capture the vastness of a waterfall. And most waterfalls are vertical and not horizontal. There's not a lot of really wide waterfalls like Niagara Falls. So when you're trying to capture an entire waterfall, this is what you end up with. You end up with a tiny little stream running through the middle of the picture. Well, this is actually a massive waterfall again, and you just don't see much. So what I always tell people is get closer to the waterfall. Get to a point where you can photograph more of the waterfall. Like this picture, maybe more vertical. Maybe pick an area that you see just smaller things of the waterfall, like this little tiny waterfall and rock and log. Get a little bit closer again and photograph even smaller parts of it. That will add to the enjoyment of the picture and it will show more of the features of the waterfall. You'll see the rocks, you'll see the water, you'll see the growth around it. The next area that so many people get frustrated with is they look at a waterfall, they see it moving, and then they try to capture it in a still image. And when they do that, what happens is, is that you lose the movement of the waterfall. Now, this can be a good thing. You can capitalize on this. But a lot of times showing some motion in the photo is actually something that you want to do. Now, you want to show motion of the water. You don't want to show camera movement. You don't want to have blurry rocks around the waterfall, blurry trees. You want to have it so that the water is moving. You can see some of that movement in the image, but everything else is tack sharp. Now, if you've watched many of my videos, you're going to know that I'm not a big fan of tripods, but this is one of those areas that if you have a tripod, I recommend that you use it. And what my suggestion is, is to try your slower shutter speeds. Now, what you may have to do is turn your camera ISO down to say 100. Then set your aperture to something higher, say F13, F19, 20. And then let the shutter speed work wherever it feels comfortable and take some pictures and see what it looks like. Now, one of the areas you have to be really careful of, and this is where I get a lot of people coming in asking questions about, is why is it that the water looks so white? And this is a hard thing because around waterfalls, you have a lot of dark areas generally. And those dark areas are in exact contrast to what the moving water will look like. So there's a couple ways to do this. 
One is use the shortest shutter speed possible to show some movement, but still show some of the features of the surrounding area. The second way is, is a little bit harder and it requires some post-processing, but that is to take the picture of the waterfall so it looks like you want it, and then take an exposure for the area around it. Don't move the camera, take two pictures separately. Then when you get back to your office, to your house, wherever it is, take the two images, lay them over top of one another and erase the areas that are dark in the one image so that you can see the lightness of the other image through there. That will help you to show some of the detail, some of the features around the waterfall without blowing out the waterfall so that it's so white that it just looks like it's nothing. It just looks like it's a piece of ice there or just a white piece of paper there. So that's another area that you can do so that you get some really, really good photos of your waterfalls. So there's a couple suggestions for you on how to get better waterfall photos. Now, I know what people are starting to type. They're starting to type saying, well, don't you know you can do, don't you know there's this way, don't you know that... Uh, yeah, there, there's dozens of different ways, but I'm trying to keep my videos reasonable and I'm trying to give people stuff that they can actually do. Yes, I know you can shoot in raw and adjust from there and get the same effect. I know that you can do uh, multi exposures in camera and have it do the HDR. I know that you can do HDR on Photoshop and other programs. I, I know all about those things. But for many people, these are suggestions that will work without any extra work without any extra programs except for the last one where you will have to have a program that you could erase some of the layers like a photoshop or another program like that so i'm not trying to be exclusive that this is all the areas out there i know there's other areas but this is a couple areas that you can do to make your waterfall photos look a little bit better give them a bit more life to them, make them look more like what you see when you're out in nature. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button down below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and click on that bell notification. And I'll talk to you next time. Have a wonderful day. Get out there and take some amazing pictures and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.